Oftentimes the hardest thing to do when faced with a differential equation is figuring out which solution technique really applies. And in this class we've only covered a handful, of which there are many, many, many. Um, let's go through kind of how you can take a linear differential equation and break it down into which solution technique you're going to be after. So recall first of all, every linear differential equation, so linear first order, so linear first order differential equation can be written in the form dy dt plus some function of t times y equals some function of t. Right, so every first order linear differential equation can be written this way. No, you might need to do some algebra to get there. So let's, let's just break this down piece by piece. Let's say separation. If you can write the differential equation dy dt, now I'm going to rearrange a little bit, equals negative p of t times y plus q of t. You can always do that step. If you can write that as f of y times g of t for some f and some y. In other words, you can literally separate this thing out. Then you can separate the variables. dy over f of y equals g of t dt. You can then integrate both sides and you're off and rolling. Now the integration might actually be quite challenging and that's perfectly okay. But the key that you're looking for here is if you can actually separate the variables on the right hand side, then it's separable. Hence the name is pretty obvious. Okay. Let's take that same differential equation, so dy dt, oops, not equals, plus p of t y equals q of t, so this is again the standard form for a linear differential equation. Let's talk about undetermined coefficients. If you can write this as dy dt equals some constant times y plus q of t. Now, I kind of put the q in quotes there because you might have had to do some algebra. It might not be the same q. In fact, let me do this. For clarity, we'll say plus f of t. All right, so if you can write it this way, Right, then your y homogeneous solves dy dt equals cy, which is very straightforward. Oh, c was a bad choice, I guess. Yeah, whatever. So, some new c, capital C, e to the little c, t. All right, two c's, go with it, it's okay. All right, and your particular solution has the same functional form as f of t. Right. So, and you know what to do from there. So I'll say dot, dot, dot. You've got some steps that you can do. Um, if you can write it in this form, so again, we're looking for things that kind of look that way, then undetermined coefficients is your guy. Okay, let's start again. dy dt plus p of t times y equals q of t. If all else has failed, then you can always go for integrating factors. Right, so if the other two methods have failed, you can go for integrating factors and say rho of t is equal to e to the integral of p of t dt. I'll expand that out a little bit. That's exp of integral of capital P. Right? And after a little bit of work, which you've seen before, go back to the integrating factor videos if you need to, the differential equation becomes d by dt of rho of t 
times y of t equals rho of t times q of t. Right? That's the beauty of integrating factors is that you build this nice factor and you get something that just is product rule on the left-hand side. And so one step of integration gives you this, and you can solve for t. The trouble here is that this resulting integration may be hard or simply downright impossible. Okay, so if all of those things fail, there are other techniques out there, but for the purposes of this class, in all other cases, your numerical methods will work. Uh, for example, Euler's method. Now the downside to Euler's method or Runge Kutta or any of those um, is that you don't actually get a function for a solution, you get a plot as a solution. And that's perfectly okay. You get a list of numbers, really, which you plot. Um, but if none of the solution techniques that we've talked about here work, numerical solutions will always work on these things, and you just need a computer to, to do it. Okay.